Hello everyone, this is Dude Blender, and let's jump right in. We're gonna be making these three visual effects in Geometry Nodes. Just an FYI, I have an introduction to Geometry Nodes video that goes through the very basics. If you want to check that out before or after this one, the link is in the description. We'll begin with this one. So create any closed shape. I'm just gonna use a cube. I'm gonna delete this. Now we'll create a shape to use for instancing. I'll use a cube with a subdivision modifier, and I'll set the rendered divisions to 4. Now, Select your object and go to the Geometry Nodes workspace. Here let's add a new Geometry Node group. We want to add points within the volume of the mesh. Instance the sphere in each point and scale each instance with a wave effect. A mesh is not considered a volume, those are two different concepts. So the node that we're going to be using is called Mesh to Volume. Place it in here, you'll see in the 3D viewport that the cube now looks different. Now we add a Distribute Points in Volume node. You'll see that there are points now scattered within the volume of the shape. I don't want them to be random, so I'm gonna change it here to grid. Now this is closer to what I'm looking for. You can change the spacing here to your liking, but I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. We can always come back here to change it. Now we're gonna bring the information of this sphere into the geometry node, so we just drag and drop it, and we instance it on each of the points. Now to scale it up and down, we're gonna use a wave texture. We're gonna set this to rings, and we're gonna change the axis X to spheric. This way we can get an effect of waves coming out of the center of the object. However, you can adjust the settings to achieve different effects. Now we're just gonna plug the factor to scale and we can start previewing the animation by scrubbing the face offset value. I'll scale down the wave texture to something like 0.5 and preview my animation again. I'm gonna scale my sphere down because I think it's too big, so scale it down and remember to control A and apply this scale. So this is starting to look better. I'm gonna scale down down the wave again to 0.3 and see how this looks. Now to get more control we're gonna add a map range node and plug it here. The texture node factor outputs values from 0 to 1 so those are gonna be our min and max values. Then we just remap to whatever scale we want. Continue to adjust these values until you get something that you're satisfied with. Okay these are the numbers that I ended up using. I changed the spacing a little bit, the map range I changed from 0.05 to 0.4 and the scale of the wave I changed it to 0.2 and this looks pretty good to me. Increase the viewport levels of this subdivision to see how it would look in the render. I'm gonna shade this smooth and check out my animation. Alright for me this one's done but experiment here and change the values to find something that you might like better. Now let's see one little trick. With this setup this input controls the behavior of the scale of the instances so we can do other stuff like using an empty to influence the size of each instance. So let's try that. I will remove the wave texture and I'm gonna add a vector math node that I will set to distance. This node returns the distance between these two vectors. Now let's add an empty here and we'll just bring its information to the node editor. Now we'll compare its location to the location of each of the instances. So we add a position node. We plug this to one of the inputs in the distance node and the location of the empty goes to the other input. Now this value will be the distance between the empty and each one of these instances. We plug this to the map range node. Now the minimum distance between any two objects is zero, so that's our min. And the max will be at what distance we want the instances to start reacting to the presence of the empty. I'll change it to two for now. Now as we move the empty closer to the object, the instances react as long as they are within, in this case, two meters of the empty. One final note about this one. The group input node contains the information of the mesh on which the geometry nodes modifier is applied. This means that we can use this setup in any other closed shape. So if I were to add for example a monkey and then added a geometry nodes modifier, I can select here that node tree and you can see that the effect is now applied to this shape. And any change we make here will apply to all of the shapes that have this geometry node. So if I change the spacing, you'll see that it affects both of the shapes. Next we'll make this wave pattern. After the exercise we just did, you might be able to do it on your own. But still, I'll walk you through. So let's add a plane or any shape really. We're not going to use this geometry and that a new node group. We'll use a fresh grid so we can delete the group input node. You'll see that the geometry disappears. Now there's nothing. But if you tab into edit mode, you will still be able to see the plane. So we add a mesh, primitives, grid, and this is gonna be our geometry. Plug this into the group output, now we can see our grid. 
But change the size to whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it in two meters for now. We'll change the vertices X and Y to 32. I can always come back to change this later. Now again, if we tap into edit mode, we can see the original plane. If we want to see this geometry, we can go to the wireframe mode. Now you can see the actual grid. Again, we'll use a cube, the subsurf modifier, as our instance. I'm gonna make this smaller, move it here, even smaller. Control A, always remember to apply the scale. This is gonna be our instance. If you want, you can change the levels viewport here. I'm gonna leave it at 2 and render at 4 and shade it smooth. Now back to our grid, we bring the information of our sphere. And you should know that each of these intersections is considered a point. So we don't need to add the distribute points and faces node. We'll just add an instance and points node and plug it here. Now we plug the information of the sphere to instances and we have our instances back to solid mode now as before we're going to add the scale instances node and plug it here and also a wave texture and the map range node we're gonna change this to rings but you can also see how this shape works i will change this to z we'll again change the scale to around 0.3 maybe 0.2 and check our animation that looks pretty nice now we adjust the scale values in the map range and preview our animation. And I think we're done with this one. I saved this one for last as it's a bit trickier. Again, we'll use a grid, so add any mesh and a new geometry node group. Plug a grid node here, but this time we will keep the group input as it will allow us to have easy access to some of the controls I'll show you in a second. So we'll plug the size X and Y values into the group input. Everything you plug into this node will be accessible in the modifier property. So it's very easy to find and adjust. You can change the name of each input in this window that you can show by pressing N or this arrow. Go to the group tab, and you'll see the inputs here, and you can change the name, the default value, and the minimum and maximum values that it can take. We'll also connect a multiply math node to each of the vertices X and Y. Then size X and Y from the group input to each of the multiply nodes. A quick note here, I was supposed to change these nodes from add to multiply and I forgot in the whole video. So just keep in mind that these should be multiply nodes. However, having said that, it still works because we're still adding to the resolution. So that's why I never noticed. That was actually... <laughs> I'm not even gonna record this again, just keep that in mind. And then we'll create the new input that will be the control of the grid resolution. So that one will be connected to both multipliers. I'll change the name here to resolution. And if we go into wireframe mode, we can see the grid and we can easily change the resolution right here from the geometry nodes. Note that once it is set up in this way, this is the only place where we can actually change those values. So we will no longer have access inside the geometry nodes. Now we'll create a long grid. I'll just make this 100 meters long. The idea here is that we will be moving the texture of the mountains along this shape. So the camera and the grid will stay in place, but it will look like you're moving through a mountainous road. First we want to set up the mountains. That's very easy. We set position and that a noise texture that will affect Z and we just connect this to offset. Now to create the movement, we'll change the Y location of the texture. So we need a combined XYZ. We'll just duplicate this and we'll plug the Y in this node yet another connector of the group input so that it's accessible here. I'll change the name to movement. Now we add a position node and we'll be adding these two nodes. For that we need a vector math. We connect this to the noise texture and we connect these two nodes to the add node. Now from here we can control the movement of the mountains. We're going to add a map range node and we're going to plug it here. The noise texture factor will output values from 0 to 1 so that's our minimum and maximum range and then we can just change these numbers to our liking. Change the scale of the noise texture until you're satisfied with the result. Okay, I'm happy with this now. I adjusted the size of the grid to 35 and 100 meters. And now if we scrub on the movement control, we can see the mountains moving towards this direction. Now we'll mask where the noise texture will have effect. The idea is that we want to have a flat road that goes through the mountains. We'll use a gradient texture. I will take the UV map from the grid node. Now we'll make a color ramp like this one. This color ramp will define our mask. We'll leave it like this for now. And then once the mask is applied, we'll come back here to adjust it. So to apply it, we'll multiply the output of the color ramp by the output of the map range. Now, if we go to front view like this, we can easily see what we're doing. The black color as a number is a zero. So everything that you multiply by zero, then the output will be zero. That's why the mountain texture is not applied here. And the opposite 
because it is with white. White is one. So any number that you multiply by one will be that number. So here at the sides, you'll see that the texture is unchanged. So we can use this color ramp to easily adjust where we want our texture to be applied. Now, this is how my color ramp ended up looking. The center, which is supposed to be the road, I left it in a gray so that it was not completely flat and it was a little bit more realistic. But experiment here to find something that you like. Now, to get that retro 3D effect, we can add a wireframe modifier. And now to change the material, we need to create one. I already have one here and then we need to apply it. Now, since this grid was created in the geometry nodes, the material has to be applied also here in the geometry nodes. So to do that, we add a set material node and we can plug it here at the end. Now we just select the material and if we go to the render view, we can see that the material is applied. This is a material that I set. Note that you could also use the wireframe node in the shader. The difference is that the wireframe modifier takes the exact geometry that you created. But if I turn this off and use the wireframe in the shader, you'll see that it creates tries. And so depending on what you're going for, you can use either the wireframe shader or the wireframe modifier. Now, one of the differences is that with the wireframe modifier, you cannot see the faces. So if you wanted to apply a material to the faces, this method might not not work for you. And with the wireframe shader, you can apply a material to the wireframe and another one to the faces. So it really depends on the effect that you're going for. And one last thing in the geometry nodes. So with this value, we can move the mountains. But if you go to the noise texture, change it to 4D if it's not already, and then you'll see this W value. You'll see that the mountains start moving. So you can actually animate both this W value and the movement to achieve a pretty neat effect. Now I just finished making any five Final adjustments, lights, materials, and in the timeline you can create a very very simple animation by creating a keyframe of whatever it is you want to animate, let's say the movement, create a keyframe with I, then advance any number of frames, let's say 50, move with let's say 50, another keyframe, and you can see the animation. Of course you can adjust the animation parameters here, make it slower, faster, or anything that you might like. That's it for today, drop a like, comment and subscribe if you liked the video and connect with me on Instagram and TikTok with the handle at dude underscore. Core Blender. I'm Dude Blender. Happy blending.